Merry Christmas everyone. Welcome to Charge Heads. My name's Tim. I thought I'd do a video about what I've learned about EV conversions, specifically for the UK market, which is very different to the American market. As I'm sure you'll find out in a minute. I've been looking at EV conversions, been on the EV conversion journey for two years. And this is someone who's got quite a strong petrol head, car enthusiast background. I got the passion for electric cars from a few things, people from work and the exciting electric EV conversions which were coming out uh, on YouTube, which I was seeing. No. Dude, are you f***ing kidding me? But EV conversions have been around for ages. Uh, if you check out my video with Paul Compton, the EV guru, uh, I'll try and put it up there if I can. Check that video out. He has been doing EV conversions for years. There was a really, really small community doing that type of conversion, uh, mainly with lead acid batteries or NICAD batteries a bit later on. As you know, and if you're watching this, EV conversions is getting massive now. <laughs> Which is great. We've got people in who are really pushing the boundaries with the EV conversions with the fact that we've got all these power dense lithium batteries now, which allows us to, you know, go a lot further in these electric cars and EV conversions. So yeah, EV conversions have been around for a long, long, long time. What I've seen in just the two years that I've been into EV conversions, the scene has changed massively. And I'll get onto that in a second. But let me have a look at my notes because I want to make sure I get everything in here. And I made a little bit of a list. So, price. Now, EV conversions, you probably know they ain't cheap, are they? The uh, main reason for that is the amount of hours that go into reconstructing the car. The battery price is the most expensive part of the EV conversion. Now, the good news is there's kits that are out there now. And the more that these kits are made, bought, sold, etc., and converted, the cheaper, you know, it's economies of scale, the more it's produced, it will come down in price. It's never gonna be cheap, but the prices will come down. So there are, there's quite a few companies in the UK doing kits, and the main cars that you see kits on at the moment are Fiat 500s, Minis, um, you've got old shape classic Beetle, 911 kits and uh, Defenders. There's a few kits for Defenders. Now, originally when I first started doing EV conversions, there weren't the comprehensive kits out there, but things have come on a whole lot since then. If you went to a company and said, please can you convert my classic Mini or Fiat 500? If the Mini or Fiat 500 needed nothing else doing to it, so it was a mint car, you're talking at least 25,000 pounds. And obviously depending on how much range you want on the car. So it's not a cheap starting price. And I don't think a lot of people are doing these EV conversions for the sake of saving money. If you are, then you, you probably got your mass wrong. <laughs> or you're getting a really good rate on the electric. Can I plug in please? The main reason, I mean, what, the reason I've done it. It's because I give a sh about the environment. And I'm really passionate about cars using used battery and used motors was important on my specific build, which not many people want to get involved in because a lot of the EV conversion companies, they want to use new parts a lot of the time. Oh dear, hopefully my electric TVR will be reliable. You'll have to keep watching, find out. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of EV conversion companies, not all of them, but a lot of them uh, do want new parts. There are a lot of EV conversion companies that do repurpose parts out there. So if you haven't got the skills, EV conversion company, 25K plus. You know, if you want a super fast, long range car on a car that no one's really done before, you're gonna be talking 100 grand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe less, depending on, you know, how you can source parts and who you're using, etc. So that's quite expensive way of doing it. Now you can do it yourself, and there's a fantastic EV DIY community out there, whether it's YouTube, uh, there's a fantastic forum called Open Inverter Forum, check it out. Um, I didn't even, I couldn't find that forum and I actually started my own forum with charge heads. I was thinking, hang on a minute, this hasn't been popular at all. I didn't realize that the Open Inverter Forum, it had all the information there already and I wish I'd seen that before I've got two down the road with the EV conversion. Um, process because all the information you need is there, some really helpful guys on there. Uh, also on uh, Facebook, the EV conversion group, 
check that out. What I've learned to make the most cost-effective EV conversion is get a donor car. Uh, first of all, you need to make sure you've got the skills, the space, and please do it safely. Have the safe tools. I've done an EV conversion safety videos too with Ralph. Check them out, very important, um, because we don't want anyone hurting themselves because it's bound to ruin the scene, not only yourself, but also bring in some um, quick regulations which will be utter crap from the government. Because let's be honest, they haven't got much right the last few years, have they? It's time to raise the curtain on the Muppet Show tonight. Uh, ooh, political. So with the DIY side of things, best thing to do is get a Nissan Leaf or something like a Mitsubishi Maya because you can use the motor, the batteries, the inverter, the charger, as much as possible on the car just to bring the cost down. And then it's just your labor, which is the most expensive part of an EV conversion is the labor cost because it does take a lot of time. To make it cheap, that's the way to do it, or less expensive, sorry, it's never gonna be cheap. It does look like with all the technology and all the kits and everything else, prices will come down, battery costs, which is a large percentage, you know, it's all gonna come down because of the amount of batteries that are being produced. And I'm hoping that, you know, on these EV conversions, they're gonna be more easy to uh, upgrade uh, than something like uh, like a manufactured EV, com EV like a Tesla Model 3. Uh, but we'll see, we don't know what the future holds, but I'm hoping it's gonna be able to repurpose these electric cars more from a raw materials and environmental point of view, rather than everybody being on a two or three year lease, which I'm not particularly a massive fan of, if I'm honest. How dare you? Next on the list is, I don't forget anything, Regulations, oh yeah, regulations. Now this is a classic. You might have heard of the IVA. If you haven't, be very scared. If you are doing an EV conversion in the UK, you have to follow these guidelines from the DVLA, which is the body of uh, the motor industry in terms of registering cars, etc. So to keep the registration plate that you've currently got, as a summary, there is a point system and on this point system, there is the chassis, the suspension, axles, transmission, steering assembly, and engine. Just to very, make it really simple and just sum it up for you. If you alter the chassis or the monocoque body, then it will need an IVA test, individual vehicle uh, test, or an SVA, which is a separate vehicle test. And an IVA costs about 6,000 pounds per battery box if you're doing an electric conversion and uh, a lot of the cars that I've come across have two battery boxes, so it can be very expensive. Um, I've got two battery boxes on the electric TVR conversion that I'm doing. I say I, Ralph, that we're doing. That is the most important thing. Do not touch the chassis. As soon as you touch the chassis and you try and register the car, you will not be able to, um, because it's all about the point system. And that, you have to have over eight points and each separate thing, engine, transmission, etc., etc., amount a certain number of points. But because the chassis is, I think it's five points of the components of, that make up the car, it's, it's too big to not be able to um, modify it and still do the EV conversion. Don't get me wrong, have an IVA test, SVA test. If you've got deep pockets and the time, that's fine. And companies like Eco Classics, um, and there are other companies out there like Zero EV, they would have gone through those sort of tests on some of the development that they do with, uh, with companies on cars to make sure that they're safe. Because they're not, they're not worrying so much about these tests, they're worrying about making sure that it's the best possible electric car it can be. Essentially, it's not like the USA uh, or a lot of other countries. I'm not sure if Canada's the same, but in the US for sure, you know, you'll see all these amazing builds. But from what I've seen, there's no way that that would be legal in the UK because of the amount that they cut out the car, and I'm sure they do it safely, but it's just a no-no in the UK. So when you're doing an EV conversion in the UK point system, do not touch the chassis. Don't start, you know, uh, taking uh, chunks out of the car's, you know, strength, body, etc. 
you need to be very, very careful. And this is where kits, EV kits will come in to help because they are designed, well, the ones in the UK from UK companies, they are designed to uh, take advantage of any of the space that's in the car and still um, going with the UK regulations, abiding by them, which is uh, very important. The scene is great, you know. Um, everybody that I've met in the EV conversion world is, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great place, probably because it is smaller. Uh, there's not really kind of like different pockets like there is, is with uh, the petrol head community. You know, you've got your V-Dub fans and the Jap fans and this, that, the other. Um, it tends, to, it, well, I suppose you could argue that there's the DIY community and then there's the uh, community that have just got their car converted. Um, I do try and bridge the gap, even though I haven't got the technical knowledge uh, yet. I still need to do the training with Ralph when I've got a bit more time, which would be good. So the technology, I've, as I mentioned earlier, I've been following the EV conversion uh, scene for the last two years. Things have changed so much, you know, whether it's the kits, the, the products, what you can buy now, you know, the companies getting involved like AEM, a traditional ice uh, tuner uh, of parts. And I've had AEM stuff on sort of previous cars before. They're really, you know, there's so many companies getting involved now, seeing seeing the light uh, around electric conversions. It, it's it's fantastic, um, and the number of YouTube channels and bills that you keep seeing popping up is fantastic. And Moggy has really kind of helped. Uh, Richard Morgan, Electric Classic Cars, he's really helped increase the number of people interested in EV conversions and electric cars, I think, as well, uh, with the Discovery Channel. This time on Vintage Voltage. Uh, being on CarWow, I think, helps massively because that's a huge petrol head channel. <laughs> So yeah, there's, there's some real uh, leaders in the field that are really pushing the boundaries and getting more car people in, interested in the electric stuff. I mean, you've got Nick from Eco Classics. He's doing a single seater electric race car now, which is amazing. He's done the catering before. He's done an Urban 911 kit as well as Zero EV. You know, there, there's some great companies out there, great people. And like I said, the tech is just moving at an alarming rate. I mean, yes, a lot of the tech does come from China a lot of the time, but there are some specifics that are done in the UK uh, to make EV conversions easier to build. So you have to, have to do everything yourself and the tech is just getting a whole lot better. And I think there are still, obviously, like there will always be in many subjects, there are still a load of purists out there that hate it and oh no, what about the noise? What about the noise? Well, I think a lot of people are realizing now, you know, especially people who've got electric cars. Uh, and it's good that a lot of people are seeing that, you know, you don't have to have noise to have an exciting driving experience. I talked about noise on the TVR. I can't have a silent TVR. Well, it'll be electric which I'm still planning to have some element of noise. You know, obviously there's a safety factor as well, uh, even though our rusty Tesla, uh, modified Tesla, part of the channel, one of the builds, uh, makes no noise because it's an early Tesla. But yeah, I think, I think there will be a lot more car enthusiasts getting into uh, EV conversions in the near future. It's just snowballing, it really, really is. Because the amount of congestion zones you know, price of fuel. Um, there's so many elements which just show that if you're looking at all the information, it's just quite obvious that the EV conversion uh, is just seen as just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm so lucky that I've got involved early doors and I've seen this progression and I'm still involved. And, you know, I'm maybe got a very small percentage of getting people involved with charge sheds. I hope that is the case, and I hope that continues to be the case. Um, and please keep watching my TVR electric build. There's more stuff to come in 2023, that is for sure. And then I'm gonna start experience driving it, uh, which is gonna be fantastic. So I can't wait for that and uh, you know, showing you the content. And please check out the socials, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, 
Uh, you've got the website as well, which I'm gonna update because that needs updating. I'm not doing this full time, so just bear with me. I would love to do it full time, but unfortunately uh, no one sponsors me yet. So if anyone's got a load of cash they wanna throw at charge heads, please let me know because I've got none left. Um, so, so, <coughs> so there we are. Merry Christmas, everybody. I look forward to producing some good content next year. Thanks everyone who subscribed so far. Please share, like, subscribe, all those wonderful YouTube things. And I'll see you next year. Enjoy your time with the family and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.